But let's be honest. Who doesn't love Harry Potter? Who doesn't Potter? love Harry Potter? Yeah. Dumb people. Dumb, dumb people. Dumb people don't, dumb like, people don't like Harry yeah. Potter. We can't I can't associate with their kind. Family. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I actually don't. Do I know anybody who doesn't like Harry Potter? I probably do. And I probably just don't talk to them. <laughs> Welcome. You are entering into a strange dimension. A dimension where narratives from across space and time come together. Narratives that could have, might have, or should have been all exist here in one space. This is Cinemasters Ultimate Timeline. Welcome back to Cinemasters Ultimate Timeline, the show where we watch a movie and then realize it's awful and then repitch it to a movie that we would like. Um, today we're doing Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I'm, of course, DeJangles the Strange, and joining me, as always, is the wonderfully handsome Nate Draper. Thank you. Uh, so, like I said, we're doing uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and so I'm just uh, I'm curious about your thoughts about the movie. So, um, I actually enjoyed it more watching it a second time around. Oh, okay, yeah, really? Yeah, the yeah. First, I, I actually, um, I remember, because I'd seen it in theaters and then watched it again last night, and uh I actually do. I do enjoy it. On a whole, I think it's a very, very fun movie. Um, I think Eddie Redmayne is great. He uh, he definitely kills it as Newt. Oh yeah, it, it, absolutely. Yeah, I, and I do want to talk about like his character, like as he plays Newt. Like, I'm not a doctor, and so I can't, um, or a psychologist or psychiatrist, so I can't diagnose somebody. But it, he feels to me like he's definitely kind of on the ASD spectrum. Yeah, and it's but it's not played like. Like in a uh, oh he's autistic. It's like he's socially awkward and could be on the spectrum, but it works out really well, kind of in his favor. Because there are people who are just super into certain things, and one of the scenes in there actually where he uh, he's kind of awkward around people, but as soon as they go into the suitcase, he's in his he, element. Yeah, he's yeah. in his element. There's all the people there, and you sort of see him actually open up. He starts talking to Jacob more than he has. Like his dialogue, all of a sudden goes. Way up, like it up. spikes, right? Yeah. So he's talking to Jacob up because he's excited about animals. And mm -hmm. um, and another thing is later on he goes when he's talking about the case, and he's like, "There's no animal in there that'll hurt you. Don't hurt those animals. Don't hurt those animals." You know what I mean? And you can feel the emotion behind mm -hmm. that. It's like, holy crap! Like he almost cares more about animals than he does about people. <laughs> um, and I thought Eddie Redmayne killed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's great. I mean, he's good in everything. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I thought, yeah, on a, on a whole, I thought it was fun. I just feel that there was some bits towards the end where it became not convoluted, but it became too busy. Yeah, I'm the same way where the, for me, it's the ending that feels the worst. Everything yeah. else feels great. Um, and I, I'm not talking about the thing with Kowalski walking out into the rain. I'm talking about that whole climactic the fight, scene. fight scene. I'm the same way. I'm the yeah. same way. I will, and I want to get and there because I, I talk I've, about it. I think I may have come up with an alternative as to Me how, too. how that might have worked. Me too. Okay. I'm the same way. So um, I also wanted to ask two things about this movie. A is, did you know that going into it, did you know that it's going to be five movies? I didn't know going into it, but I looked at it again and was actually surprised to yeah. find it. And then I also saw... Um, Jude Law is rocking Albus Dumbledore. I know. I'm nice really excited about that. Corduroy yeah, vest. Because <laughs> I really enjoy Jude Law. Yeah, he's so, great. He's great. But uh, no, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you like, if you knew that that um, this movie is not a standalone. It's actually set up for a five trilogy or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Because originally it was going to be a trilogy. Sync uh, quintilogy. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be five movies. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I wanted to know if you knew that that a lot of that movie was actually set up. up. Yeah. Um, that, well, that makes sense. I mean, I knew that they were going to do other Harry Potter movies. I was expecting it to be like another story because Fantastic Beasts was meant to be like Newt Scamander's at least and I, at the first time I saw it, I thought it was meant to be his spin-off standalone movie and then they were going to do other ones but now it looks like they're just continuing the Yeah, the I Fantastic actually Beasts. I actually got super mad. Yeah, Cinquent trilogy, trilogy, whatever. Yeah. I actually got super mad when I found out they were putting in the whole Dumbledore uh, Grindelwald timeline because I was like, no, it was just supposed to be Fantastic Beasts. But then when I went back and did some research, I found out that Rowling had al always written it to be with a story in mind. Oh, okay. It just, the difference was whether it was going to be um, a trilogy, because she knew it was going to be a movie franchise, but the difference had been whether it was going to be a trilogy, which was what it was originally pitched as, and then she realized actually there's enough material there for five movies, not three. 
So I'm just worried that they don't spread themselves too thin. Uh, but I really yeah. enjoyed the first one. In fact, I would go so far to say that it is my favorite Harry Potter movie. Ooh. And I love Harry po- the Harry Potter books. But I feel like it benefits from not having a... Um, from not having source material. Oh, okay. So, In the sense that there's not a book. Yeah, there's, there's not there's a no book novel. to mess up yeah, with, right? Yeah. So it's telling its own story with, and we're all familiar with the cinematic universe, or right. I mean, the Potter universe. Yeah, the Potter yeah. universe. So, like, even if you haven't read the books, you should be familiar with how magic works and whatnot, because yeah. it's in the pop culture now. Yeah, people um, I think get Harry Potter enough. Yeah, enough. So if you're if this is your, if this is your first Harry Potter movie, I actually think it's going to come out really, really well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, and the second thing I wanted to ask you before we move on is, did you find it different because this time you watched the movie with me? I wondered that because there were some things. I also noticed other things because you pointed things out to me, which I then went back later and looked up. Um, one was the, uh, the, the the wizard segregation law. Yeah, Rappaport's um, law. Yeah, yeah. So that was something I didn't realize that there had actually already been a history built yeah. around it, which was really fascinating to me. It is super fascinating. So... I think the movie doesn't require you to know that, but it's mm-hmm. definitely beneficial. Yeah. Well, one thing that occurred to me, I think that you appreciate the movie more if you, I mean, and this would go without saying, but I think it plays a lot better for people who know the universe just because there are so many little things that they are winking at that happen at other parts of the universe. Like the whole thing with Grindelwald. Yeah. Like you won't get the significance of his character unless you've read or do they talk about him in the movies? I think they must. Uh, Grindelwald. They yeah. they briefly mention him a lot in uh, in seven. seven. Like he's right. he's but he's well, never. He's it's not re- character. It's yeah. just they just talk about like in the first movie they talk about how uh, Dumbledore and Grindelwald had an epic battle and it's one of the things Dumbledore is most famous oh, for. Okay. But in the fourth or in the seventh movie and book they talk a lot about how the Aberforth. Dumbledore. Yeah, Aberforth, Ariana, Dumbledore, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because that's pretty significant in terms of who Dumbledore, Albus Dumbledore is. Is And becomes. But it's explored a lot more in the books. So, I I mean, we know a lot about Dumbledore, but we don't know a lot about Grindelwald. Exactly. So I'm I'm excited to see how this turns out. Yeah. Um, Awesome. Did you want to start with your pitch, or do you want me to start with mine? Uh, It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I've got it right here. I can... Well, you started right last time. Okay. Well, then I guess it, it's only fair if you okay, go first. So I'll go time. first. So before I wanted to start, um, there, I have a couple thoughts that I based my pitch in. So um, these are just sort of thoughts that I talked about but didn't do anything with with the pitch. I just wanted them to be said. So the first thing I wanted to say about this is this movie needs to decide what it, its identity is. Because... I love everything in this movie, but I feel like there are two distinct identities. There's this, like, fantastic Harry Potter, like, um, you know, awe and wonder that comes with magic. And we get a lot of that whenever Newt's around. Like, when we're in his in his suitcase, it looks... Everything's amazing, like, in terms of the way it's shot and, and the effects. And then all the animals are, like, amazing and fantastic, fantastic beasts, right? And And... But then we switch almost contrastedly into... Um, credence and his sort of subplot where like he's being beaten and witches are and it's dark it's even shot darker you know what I mean so I almost feel like there's the film has two identities where like as much as I love the film we got um, it either should have leaned more heavily into the Fantastic Beasts like awe and wonder of magic or it should have leaned way heavier into the dark backstory of wizarding in America with like these second Salemers and like this this you know emotional brutality that this this woman is bringing down upon people who she thinks have magic and like why she's suspicious and i actually think this darker version would be more interesting because we haven't seen harry potter go in that direction harry potter often hints at um darkness Mm -hmm. but we not until really like the seventh movie well no even the third book with the dementors gets pretty dark yeah yeah yeah, and the fourth one has some dark moments what with voldemort coming back from the grave but it's always it always hints at them whereas i feel like this movie dealing with wizarding in america which is underground due to rapaport's law and 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 um, other things that happen in american history with the salem witch trials and hysteria around wizarding which causes this massive segregation i feel like there's a darker movie in there and the movie couldn't decide mm-hmm. what I wanted to be. So um, I could have pitched that, but I didn't because I love the movie we got. So I didn't pitch a darker version. The second thing that I wanted to say is I actually was kind of super frustrated with the fact that Colin Firth 
becomes uh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell, yeah, not Colin, Colin Firth. Firth is the King Speech. Yeah, no, Colin Farrell um, turns into uh, Johnny Depp. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I was like Colin Farrell is such an amazing actor, and he kills it as Graves. Yeah, and and he's such a great villain. Um, so I was I, I understand why, but I was super frustrated to be like, oh, let's just have Colin. <laughs> Um, transform. Colin Farrell transform into Johnny Depp just because Johnny Depp has the star power. Yeah, and it's not like Colin Farrell isn't an amazing actor. It's not like he couldn't do a British accent. I I just think and he's I, uh, is he Irish? Yeah, he's Irish. Yeah. I feel like um, it was they were they were sort of. I feel like the way Graves portrays like as Grindelwald is like he's manipulative, but like power hungry mm -hmm. whereas i think as soon as grindelwald comes out it's just creepy it's just and you're bad like, guy yeah it's just like oh he's the bad guy and he even looks creepy and he's well, like johnny depp i know but i feel like it's a cop out but i did want to talk about did you notice that the first time we see graves he has the same haircut as mm -hmm. the back of grindelwald's head yeah yeah, yeah so when, the, like at the very opening of the movie whenever yeah. and whenever they talk about graves they or whenever they talk about grindelwald it'll always pan towards Mr. Graves, like, oh, like they're okay. like if you watch the cinematography, it's actually like hinting that he's oh, yeah. Grindelwald. It's the haircut is the smart. same. Yeah, 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 it's actually pretty smart. So with that out of the way, I want to get into the summary in terms of then... how it misleads you because it, it, it oh, that was misleading thing, is, yeah, was yeah. really well done it, too. It did yeah. work. Yeah, uh, I do, I do want to just do a quick summary and then I'll get into my pitch. Okay. Okay. So the quick yeah. summary is: Newt Scamander is a young magi zoologist who comes to New York and he sees a group known as the Second Salemers outside a bank. Inside that bank, he meets a nomad known as Jacob Kowalski. After tracking down his Niffler, Newt attempts to erase Kowalski's memory, but is blindsided by the nomad, who then runs off with the wrong suitcase. Tina Goldstein, an ex orer that uh, t then takes Newt into Makusa custody for breaking the law, um, but due to the loss of her position as an orer and the mix-up of the suitcase, she can't get anything to stick to him. Kowalski then opens the case, and several of the monsters escape. Tina and Newt bring Kowalski back to um, Tina's place where she lives, where we then meet her sister, Queenie, who is a legilimens. She can read minds without the use of, of a wand or a spell. Uh, after checking on his animals in his suitcase, Newt and Kowalski go out to recover the Niffler and the Eruptment before Tina traps them and then brings them back to Makusa again. Meanwhile, an Auror named Graves has been meeting with a young boy from the Second Salemers to try and figure out who the young child might be that seems to be wreaking havoc across New York City. It's very mysterious. Mm -hmm. uh, Tina then traps the two boys inside the case, brings them to Makusa, and then the three are arrested because they think one of Newt's monsters is the um, thing causing havoc in New York, and they are sentenced to death. But then they find up escaping with the help of um, Jacob and Queenie, and the four track down the last two missing creatures in New York. Graves then learns that Credence, the boy he was talking to, is in fact the Obscurial, and has some semblance of over control over his dark counterpart. While smashing the city up, the four main characters and Mr. Graves follow Credence to a subway station where they try to calm him down. Then Makusa shows up, and they seemingly try to kill Credence, uh, and it is revealed that Grindelwald, Graves is actually Grindelwald. Jacob then has his memory re erased, but Newt sets him up along with, with the entire city. Oh yeah, and along with the entire city. And Newt has his, or Newt then sets him up with collateral so he can open his, his own bakery. We then see uh, where he has a bakery, and he seems to almost remember Queenie. And then oh, and all of his pastries are fantastic beasts. Base yeah, shaped. and then Newt base and shaped. Tina say goodbye with the promise of meeting again. Newt boards a boat and leaves. And so, or and curtain, or curtain, fin credits, yeah, or whatever. Fin, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so, this one actually important matter of um, of uh, 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 word usage uh, that I wanted to clarify because I actually this is something I got hung up on. So an obscurious and an obscurial are, are, are two, the two are different two, parts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So an obscurious is the parasite. Yep. And obscurial, but obscurial is, is a the wizard person. with the parasite. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, um, here's my pitch. So the only difference I want to make before we get to sort of the end part of the movie is we actually see Graves drinking out of a flask. And I want to do this because I want to make a joke about Prohibition era. Oh, uh, okay. Right? Because I think um, it's it'll be a funny joke because for those who don't know, in 1920s was when, um, you know, Prohibition uh, yeah. was starting to become a thing. And, and, and so we see uh, 
um, I think it would just be funny to sort of throw a joke out about Graves right. being a bit of an alcoholic. Not not maybe an alcoholic, but like Prohibition era yeah, joke. You know what's interesting though? That if I think of Polyjuice Potion. That's exactly where I'm going oh, with it. Okay. Don't ruin my pitch. <laughs> that, that's exactly where I'm going okay. with it. Um, so for me, the whole movie actually stays exactly the same except for that uh, flask thing. Um, uh except for when when they finally get into Makusa and we see them dying or we see them getting like um absorbed by the death potion or whatever when they get sentenced to death i want to make it sh- like very clear that um when Newt asks Tina about the memory in her potion that that he sees uh her losing the memory that she lost her job mm-hmm. he sees her attacking the second salemers and then saving credence and okay. Newt is like, oh, who was that boy? And she says, that's Credence. And we need it to be very clear that Newt hears Credence's name. Okay. It's very important. So uh, that way when Newt um, sees the Obscurial, he wants to help the Obscurial because he has some background with it mm-hmm. like we saw in the movie. And then he hears Mr. Graves when they're out um, in the street. They're out in the street and he hears Mr. Graves right. yelling at Credence. He goes, Credence! And then Newt can put two and two together. Oh, right. Okay, I thought that yeah. was a little loose. Right. So yeah, I just yeah. want to make it very clear. Like, oh, now Newt knows who Credence is through Tina. And then immediately when he hears like Credence, he's like, I know exactly what's going on now. So, um, so then he can figure out who it is. So the Obscurial then, um, or sorry, the Obscurious wreaking havoc on the city um, and chasing and the chase scene where they're like apparating between rooftops. I think that should be played up a bit more so we can see like Graves is chasing after credence as the black mass newt is chasing after credence as the black mass and they're both apparating across rooftops as they're like running along shooting spells at well shooting spells at each other like so Mm -hmm. they're battling each other but both trying to keep up with credence i think that would just be an i think they touched on it but i think it would be a more there was a lot more potential with way more potential so that that's uh one battle that i want to do um yeah, I just think the apparating across buildings while shooting spells, like just like, woo, 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 woo. like so they're battling each other, but chasing Credence as he destroys parts of the city. Um, so finally, when they chase Credence down to the subway, Newt wants to approach Credence, so that scene works out fine. But when then when Graves shows up, I felt like the battle between them was lackluster. Like if you remember in Harry Potter, every time somebody shoots spells, they're like different colors depending on the spell they're shooting. Mm-hmm. All of Graves' spells are either blue or he just starts shooting lightning. Yeah. The only difference is, is like he he like waves his hand and the track moves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I feel like there should be more more variation in his spells. And then um, the reason Newt gets defeated is because obviously Grindelwald is or Graves at this point is very um, skilled. Um, we don't know it's Grindelwald yet, but obviously. We know Grindelwald is like an expert dueler, um, but I want it. I want to show that Newt is more interested in saving Credence than he is in fighting Graves. So the reason he loses right. is less about his skill and more about his um, split motivation. Right. So he's trying to get to Credence, whereas Graves' singular purpose is get rid of Newt, and that's why we get this that whole thing. Um. Yeah, so then Credence starts freaking out. Um, and I, I want to do... This is my biggest part. When Credence starts freaking out and like he's like going up into the sky and slamming down and spreading out. Do you know the scene yeah, that I'm talking yeah. about? That scene is so messy. And I don't know whether it's just shot poorly or edited poorly. Well, the geography or... of what's going on is a little hard to follow. And also, also because like... you're following these giant black masses of gas. Yeah, so for me, I city. feel like there should have been a bigger battle where all of a sudden it's like Graves is trying to control the uh, the angry Credence, whereas Newt is trying to um, help Credence. But now all of a sudden, because Credence is angry, he's fighting for his life. And I feel like even though it's a black mass, because the Obscurious is a is literally like a magic dark magic come to life i feel like it should like when they shoot spells on it it should be able to control the magic a little bit oh. so like as they're shooting spells at it, it they don't just like bounce off or get absorbed they like they like get altered you know what i mean right. so like they shoot a spell and all of a sudden the spell just like turns into flowers or something like it can't hit the obscurious because right. it is magic right it's it's a par- parasitic magical form as newt describes it so i feel like more could have been done with that to make it seem like they can't touch it except for 
maybe Newt talks about a particular spell that he uses to contain the obscure. You remember how it's contained in that, uh, that bubble that he has? Yeah. So maybe he's like, oh, I found a spell that can contain it, but doesn't kill it. that's what he's it. trying to do. And, and right. Well, he's not even trying to do that yet because Credence is, he's trying to talk to Credence oh, first. Right. And now he's fighting for his life. So it's a complicated spell. Maybe he doesn't have time to get it off. Right. Right. Um, so, but I just feel like that battle scene was really poorly shot. And, and way too fast. Yeah. So we get this epic battle. Then Tina shows up, tries to calm down um, Credence. Mm. But then Makusa shows up, and Credence gets spooked. As soon as Credence gets spooked, she shoots, um, or they all shoot. Like, he's about to go crazy again. They all shoot him maybe with the spell that Newt was talking about, and they kill Credence, seemingly. Because oh, okay. I don't think Credence is dead at well, the end of the movie. we don't actually know. We don't know. Yeah, it looks little... like he escapes. Yeah, yeah it's hard to So say. I think... Uh, I think that it looks like they kill off uh, Credence. So um, Graves is now super angry because he just lost his goal. His goal is to control Credence. So then he turns to Newt, who is the closest target, and performs the Cruciatus curse, which is an unforgivable curse. This gives him away. Cause, oh, okay. So I feel like Graves is an actual person. So he loses his temper? He loses okay. his temper and goes, you know, Crucio on Newt. And Newt starts screaming in pain. And everyone's like, well, hang on. The order that I know as Graves would never do that. Right. That's not Graves. And then it's revealed that the Polyjuice Potion in the flask, oh, okay. he's been taking on Graves' Graves's is... personality. And it turns out to be Grindelwald, um, which I think just works better in terms of the harry potter universe like the use of polyjuice potion is a huge throwback um so then newt knowing that no none of them can defeat like basically makusa's like oh attack so all the auras attack but of course grindelwald is an amazing duelist so he starts like the auras are falling left and right nobody can keep up with him newt knowing that none of them can keep up with him opens his case and asks frank for help Frank is the fire or the thunderbird for anyone who oh, doesn't remember. Okay, yeah. So instead of just having Frank at the end to help with the rain, the the, the, the memory uh, loss, yeah. now we now have the Frank rain. F- like flying into the open air, like through the top of the the subway, and he causes a storm. So now Frank is like swooping down at Grindelwald because he's this Thunderbirds yeah. are this massive uh, magical. Is it beast. Grindelwald or Grindelwald? Uh, it's technically would be Grindelwald because okay. he's he's like it's implied that he's German or okay. Austrian, right? So okay, um, sorry that was a, yeah okay. So sorry if I go back and forth, That's but okay. yeah. So now we have Frank swooping down on on Grindelwald. Plus, because he can control storms, we have lightning striking at Grindelwald and all the auras. Now they feel like they have a chance, right? You know what I mean? They finally, under the weight of all the magic, Grindelwald finally falls. Got it. Um, he's not dead, and it's like barely, and there's a bunch of dead auras around him, but he finally falls. Right? They finally have him under control. Um, and then he turns into Johnny Depp. Then he turns into Johnny Depp, yeah. Oh, so, you know, he's already turned into Johnny Depp. Well, either way. They know he's Grindelwald, cause, or they know he's a bad guy. But then they can use Revelio and, and reveal Johnny, that it's Johnny Depp. You me. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm Johnny Depp, yeah. Um, so oh, then, then Newt asks Frank to help with the Venom. And Frank causes a rainstorm okay. using the Venom. We get that whole mind wipe thing. When we do, say goodbye to Kowalski... I want to end it with the rain scene. I think that scene is beautifully shot. So we don't see the bakery. We don't see him get collateral for the bakery. Oh. We just see him wander off into the streets of New York. We get that amazing scene with Queenie under the umbrella, kiss him, walk out of the scene, and, and then he opens his eyes him. and they're just gone. And he's sort of like, what? And then we sort of see him wander off into the streets of New York. That's the last time we see Kowalski in the whole film. Right. After that, we get the scene where... Um, Tina and Newt say goodbye, implying that there will be a time to see them in the future. Mm. And that's the end of the movie. Roll credits. Nice. And so for me, I think we spent too much time with wrap up in the original movie. Okay. Like, like the, the they, whole getting the money. Yeah. They do the Kowalski scene where he leaves in New York, like down the streets of New York. Yeah. But then we also see him get collateral. Then we see him in his bakery. And it's like, it feels too much like a finality for Kowalski. You know what I mean? Like, right. Whereas we know he's going to be in the sequels. Oh, really? Yeah. So I feel ah. like, he, he, yeah, he's an important character. He's one of the four main characters of the whole series, right? So Kowalski's going to be in the sequel. He's going to come back. Right. Okay. And so is Queenie. So is Tina. So is Newt. And now Grindelwald and... Jude Law wearing and Jude Law. a corduroy vest. Yeah. So I feel like, uh, for in my version, I feel like um, I want to leave Kowalski in sort of, he doesn't remember anything and it's super sad. And he doesn't have a bakery. We have a place for him to go, right? So then when he shows up in the sequel, it's like, 
oh hey it's jacob kowalski and he has a bakery and he's successful oh, you know what i mean right. but then it's a surprise when he shows up instead of just being like uh oh maybe he does remember Queenie. Right. like oh, as much as i think that shot is well done i just think like leaving kowalski on a bit of a bitter note mm-hmm. is is amazing well, what would actually be really interesting is if he actually was able to get the means for his own collateral somehow somehow this experience that he had train changed him in a way that he doesn't understand because he's forgotten all of it yeah so, so and then the next movie idea. could be him going like yeah something changed i don't know what well, happened exactly but something changed. yeah 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 yeah. but but we don't see that happen at the end of this movie oh, the end of this okay. movie is him wandering back into right and there's no it, it's a bittersweet moment then that way we also get that with tina and newt when they're saying goodbye because clearly like tina and newt have so, formed some kind of friendship right um and i actually think the actress who plays tina is amazing um watching it a second time i was like wow like there's some deep like she's a complex character. Yeah. Um, okay. Interesting. Because yeah. I felt like, her, well, I I didn't think her character was one of the stronger ones, to be honest. Oh, I watching it. But again, she's a great actress. Yeah. She's actually very talented. Watching yeah. it again, I felt like um there was a more emotionality to her portrayal rather than I know she's not super plot centric, mm-hmm. but there's a, an emotionality like everything she does is to try and get her job back because she's desperate to get it back but then she realizes newt's not a bad guy so her whole motivation changes it's so subtle because they don't point to it in the plot right but i was like wow like she is deep yeah see that I, that was something that i was actually going to just play up a little bit more mm. in terms of in, in if I, what i was planning to do with it but mm-hmm. anyway so yeah that's my pitch any any thoughts on 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 uh, my pitch. Well, you've actually kept it pretty close. I wanted. Yeah. I love this movie. Yeah. So that's why I said, like, at the very beginning, I was like, the, this movie has to decide what its identity is. Yeah. And I think there's a darker story that could be told that's actually better than the movie we got. Mm-hmm. But I love this movie so much that I yeah. didn't want to change it that much. <laughs> right? See, that was this that was, was my favorite Harry Potter movie. Interesting. Yeah. See, it's not. It's still not my favorite Harry Potter movie. I I still enjoyed it, but I agree. I think that the, the issue with the movie is that there are two stories going on. And I'm curious about. And they don't reconcile very well. No, they don't. And that's and that's the problem. Is is you? So I tried to actually try and get a way to marry them in a sense to get them to run into each other in a way that makes a little bit more sense because I felt that the issue is that it's almost too coincidental. Like Newt Scamander is here doing something at the same time this whole thing happens. Newt Scamander essentially solves his problem, and then oh, this is other thing. You, we got to go fix this. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then it it just kind of comes out of left field yeah um but i do i do like the relationship built up between those four main characters it's quite and at the end when kowalski's got to go and get his uh, memory erased it's actually a very touching scene. i know it's so great it's it's because scene. of Rappaport's law they're just like no exceptions exactly he, even though he was helpful even though he was a part of the team um and i do feel like i think you're right uh, when you talk about uh, kowalski um getting his own collateral i feel like kowalski has a bit of this moment where he goes from being this passive hero where things happen to him to an active hero where mm-hmm. things happen because of him. Exactly. And so even though he can't remember why, now he is He's changed. Uh, he's changed. Yeah. He's not he's not waiting for things to move around him. Yeah. He's go out going out and actively making change yeah. f- to make his life better. Yeah. And that's how he gets the bakery. But we don't see that till mm-hmm. movie two. Exactly. Anyway. And he doesn't even know about it, which is oddly existential for a character like, I've changed, yeah. but I don't know what happened. And and as much as I think Newt is the main character, I think that all four of them really have an emotional journey. I like think we see the world do. through Kowalski a lot, and that's a great idea well, because that's he's kind a of why he's there. Well, that's yeah. int- well, that was one of the interesting... I f- wondered if that was why they brought him into it was because they needed a way to explain certain things but it worked and also it worked just really well well because he he was just fun to watch yeah. too especially that scene with the the laughing the giggle water <laughs> yeah giggle so he drinks water. and queenie is just like is there is everyone just like you and he's like nobody's like me baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah the, the guy who played him did a great did job. a great job that's yeah. why and i actually thought like the four main characters like, this is why i'm really worried after watching the movie i'm really worried that the the sequels are going to focus less and less on Newt, Tina, Queenie, and Jacob, and more on, and more on Dumbledore okay. and Grindelwald. And, yeah. and I, 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 I'm torn because it's like, why not just have a separate movie for Dumbledore and exactly. Grindelwald and keep going with Because like, there's so much character potential in those four characters. And I feel like even in this movie, we spend too much time on Grindelwald already, like his yeah. setup, to get to... So we lose mm-hmm. Tina and Queenie. Like, like Tina and Queenie are both... Um, sort of just like female archetypes almost. Yeah. I mean, like, 
Queenie is a super interesting character. What with well, being she a had light a lot woman, of potential too. Amazing, yeah. and Tina is super interesting being a career oriented mm-hmm. or uh, or in the nineteen twenties. Exactly. But I feel like we because we don't get enough character development exactly. from them. Yeah. Well, because I think I think one of the problems with the movie is that it suffers from too many characters, and so the potential that you would have had with them is just lost due to the fact that there's just not enough time. And so I have no doubt that J.K. Rowling had this entire story in mind and she then for went, sure does and she does no, I, I, yeah, no doubt her. about it yeah. <laughs> and but then sitting down to write a two hour movie you go oh wait a minute like I have to cut this and I have to because it just isn't all going to fit because in a book you could fit all this in there but in a movie you're confined so I tried to uh, should we move on to yeah I want to hear your pitch yeah, so it's interesting it. that you bring up the uh, the darker story because I thought I thought I'd explore that a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. I wanted I'm to glad see, you did yeah. I wanted to see if there was a way to make the Grindelwald story work in parallel with the Newt's Commander story. And I may have come up with something. That Ooh, I'm stoked. This okay. is going to be good. So I felt that the biggest problem with the Grindelwald story and um, is that that whole, basically what it's leading up to is revealing that credence is the obscurial. That's the real mystery. That's, that's the real mystery. The problem is that whole story is just to set up a twist only to set up another twist that, Oh, it's Grindelwald. I felt, oh, actually, before I get onto this, I did a little bit of research. I went to the Pottermore website, read the thing on Grindelwald. And <laughs> but, but why did you do that? Because I wanted to make sure I could keep up with your encyclopedic <laughs> level of knowledge in ter- for Harry Potter so I don't embarrass myself. Yeah, and I, like I had told, I had said before, I would have been okay if you had like just rewritten the story. But I'm super glad you did that because I would have been like, wow, that's a great idea, but it would never happen because... Right. So Harry I wanted Potter. to make yeah. sure I could try and fit it within the Harry Potter canon. <laughs> well, I appreciate but that. But I also, and I'm a huge Harry Potter fan too, not as big as you, <laughs> but I, I did because I wanted to just refresh my memory on some of it as well. Um, anyway, so with Grindelwald, um, on the Pottermore website, there is a blurb where it talks about him working, um, meeting Credence and him trying to use Credence to expose the ministry. Now, I felt like in terms of how that was actually done in the movie, it missed some of that. Mm. And I thought that is a much more interesting direction for Grindelwald's character. And so I thought, what if he actually knew Credence was the Obscurial? And all along, his plan is to actually have Credence explode. And, and he's actually using Credence the whole time. And that is but what doesn't I, tell But Credence. doesn't tell Credence. <sighs> and I thought that would make him an even more sinister and even more terrifying villain. The other thing that I thought was interesting about Grindelwald is he has this saying that keeps coming up for the for greater, the greater good. good. And I thought if his motivation, because at the end of the current Fantastic Beast, he says the whole plan kind of goes sideways for him. And then he goes, but look, this, this law, who is it protecting? It's protecting them and not us. And it, it's played more like we are better than them and we deserve protection. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if instead it's this law is protecting nobody. They're getting hurt and we're getting hurt. This whole thing needs to change. Yeah, because they, they do kind of talk about that in uh, in the seventh book of Harry Potter, where they talk about how Dumbledore and Grindelwald kept talking about for the greater good, as in, like, we would rule over the the muggles for their own good. Mm-hmm, and, exactly. Yeah. And I feel like that would be his ultimate position. But it's not played like that in the movie. In the movie, it's played we're better than them. I thought it'd be more interesting if his position is, no, this law is wrong. And so his way of exposing it is he's going to use credence, but his motivation is I am using this child for the greater good. And I felt that that would just tie into his character more. And I felt making that simple switch would give that plot, that B plot, uh, more prominence, and it would actually make it more purposeful in the context of the greater and story. And it makes Grindelwald way more sinister. And it makes sinister. Grindelwald way more sinister and more interesting, too. Mm. And I felt that was the biggest... That is my biggest suggestion for how to change the movie is instead of making it so that we don't know who the Obscurial is, Credence is the Obscurial. And we then we have this character, Graves, who's spending time, who's going and meeting with this kid and trying to teach him how to control his power. And at first we're like, oh, Graves is trying to help this child. And he keeps saying, and then Credence would keep saying, why, why am I still here? You said you could help me. Why haven't you helped me yet? And Graves would say, I can't yet because people would be too scared of you. And at first you think Graves is trying to help him, but then after a while you realize, oh, he's just using Credence. So as an audience, would we uh, know that Credence is the Obscurious? We might not know he's the, the Obscurial. Obscurial. We wouldn't necessarily know he's the Obscurial, but we would know that he has 
magical ability. Abilities. So like we could almost say like, oh, you're a squib, mm-hmm. um, or maybe not even a squib. Like maybe he's just um, has magical abilities, but it was never trained. Something like that. Well, I w- yeah. I actually would go as far as to say that he knows that he's exceptional in his ability. But Grave says you have to stay hidden because the wizarding community would be terrified of what you really are. So we, so as an audience, we don't know he's the Obscurial. We don't know he's the Obscurial. Graves knows he's the Obscurial. But we think that Graves is trying to help him, but only really to actually be trying to build up his power so that in the end, Credence can explode in front of the entire city. And then Grindelwald can reveal himself and go, look. Look at what happens when we have these laws in place. We have to change this. Or look at what even even to go further into because what causes an obscurious and an obscurial is when uh, um, when a child represses their magical ability. Mm-hmm. So like, look what happens to our children. Exactly. When with and then he, so he makes it look like he's the good guy. Like we need to repeal the law when actually he's the bad guy who exactly. caused this to happen. Exactly. Brilliant. And, and that's how and that's how they end up. Um, that's what's revealed at the end. Because at first they'd go, "Oh, maybe he's right," but then someone can say, "But wait a minute, you, you used that or, kid, or, or maybe like Tina and Newt somehow re- can reveal." Because Tina seems really close mm-hmm. with the family, but yeah. but in the original movie, her um, connection with the second Salemers is tenuous because we only yeah. see it via memory, and then we see her investigating them at the beginning. Exactly. But if we showed like her actually like looking in on Credence. Whereas, so she's not even, maybe she's not even supposed to go near the second Salemers, mm-hmm. but because she has formed some kind of relationship with the second Salemers, or at least Credence, right? Mm-hmm. So, so she keeps checking in on Credence to see how he's doing, and he's like, oh, I've got help from somebody else. Exactly. And, and, but we, and then she's like, who? Well, here's another thing. I was actually thinking, so for Tina's character, I thought there was another more interesting direction to take Tina's character, which was that she is maybe one of the first people in New York to mention there's this thing called an obscurial and people are scared of that and they shut her down and they say, no, 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 you're crazy. And that's how she gets demoted is not because she was incompetent mm. or well in the movie it's she gets demoted because she was somewhere where she wasn't supposed to be. Well, she, she attacked a muggle, she a nomad, a muggle, right? Uh, because he was to defend. She was beating mm-hmm. um, anyone, right? Yeah. And so but my thinking is she actually gets demoted because she's the one who's speaking the truth and people are, t- and are which, afraid of that. And which goes actually with the rest of the Potter universe. This is what happens in the fifth. Yeah. Sixth when, when people speak the truth about Voldemort, they get, they shut, get down shut down and called crazy. And so this happens, this happens in this instance too. And it's like a thematic throwback. Exactly. It's like a thematic throwback. And, but Graves defends her. Graves actually goes, she might actually be, well, he doesn't say it publicly. Okay. But yeah, he goes yeah. to her privately and goes, no, no, no. You, I think you might be right. Tell me more. And he actually uses her. And she might not trust him entirely because I think she'd have – she's smart. She might know there's something off about him, but he's the only person who's not calling her crazy. So my thinking is – so she gets – she ends up getting connected with Newt because Newt is now in the city. There is something going on, and she is tasked with following him to make sure that what he's doing, like that he's not actually causing trouble – and they both, and my other thinking is they both connect. It'd be more interesting if they both connect because they both feel misunderstood. Like left out. Like left like out. Like almost like how they hint at Lena Lestrange, how they were both sort of um, outsiders at school. So mm-hmm. now if, if, because Newt's always an outsider and Tina is now, now she's an outsider, outsider because, because of her um, thoughts on the obscurious, obscurial. Then, mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. And this, I think, is how they should both bond. And what, one thing I do like about the movie is that they're both awkward people Mm -hmm. and i thought that was a nice connection that they had but i thought it could have been an extra level where what they see in each other is we both feel like outcasts and so she starts spending time with him and recognizes this about him but then she sees that he has an obscurial and she goes this is dangerous to have you can't have this here and he explains like no 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 i'm trying to study these things so my thought was then she asks for she him tells, for help. Well, she actually tells Graves, "Oh, this guy has an obscurial here." Thinking she doesn't know obscurious. who else. Obscurious. Obscurious. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, she doesn't know. Uh, she doesn't know who else to talk to about it. And Graves is the only person who's defended her, so she goes to him, thinking that he'd be able to help out, and he ends up arranging for Newt's arrest. Mm. 
and she she actually betray, instead of betraying Newt intentionally, she betrays him accidentally, and then has to go and fix it. Yeah, and That's that cool. and that would be the, essentially the other change that I would make. Instead of her taking the suitcase into the ministry, it's she talks to someone, not knowing else who to talk to. And finds, and then only later discover, oh, that's actually Grindelwald. Yeah. And he, and because the, the other thing I felt that was lacking too with the movie is he gets the Obscurious, but then kind of discards it. Like it doesn't necessarily help him with his plan with Credence. What do you mean? Oh, he has the Obscurious he, in the like, case. the case, yeah. And yeah. I thought he, Grindelwald should actually, when he hears about the Obscurious, you use the audience like, oh, it's Graves. He's trying to protect everyone. Later, you realize, oh, he wanted the Obscurious because he wanted to understand it himself. Yeah, but we, we there's a scene in the movie where we see, like, um, the Obscurious, uh, like Gr- Newt says, the Obscurious is, is useless without a host. Like, it, the, the sort of cage that it's in, it can't exist outside of that. Mm-hmm. It's almost like Newt has created, like, a suspended magical animation force field Mm -hmm. that the obscurious can't exist outside of because the obscurial the the sudanese girl he keeps talking about has died and so Mm -hmm. he managed to separate the two Mm -hmm. um so and and graves even says like oh it's useless without a host so he realizes he has to keep credence alive Mm -hmm. even if he doesn't want to exactly but my thinking is he keeps the obscurious because it's something he maybe he wasn't even familiar with yeah, but he tries to. But now that Newt knows that he has it, he has to arrange for Newt to be, you know, killed or executed, and for the suitcase to be destroyed, so that he can keep the obscurious. Yeah. and then he blames Tina for it, mm. and that's how he gets out of it. Yeah, and then um, she goes back, rescues him, and then he has to. He has the opportunity to leave with his suitcase, which is why he's there. Yeah, but then he is loyal to a fault. He's Hufflepuff. That was another thing I was thinking. Yeah, well, they're hardworking, not... Yeah, well, no, but that's actually a dis- Loyal, quality they described. Are that's, that's but a... they're hardworking and friendly, so I could see the friendship well, part. Well, J.K. Rowling describes on her, on Pottermore, like, loyalty is a big quality that they have. And I was thinking it might be interesting if the whole relationship with, uh, is it Leela Lestrange? Le- uh, Lita. Lita? Lila? I, I think it's Lita Lestrange. I think Lestrange. it's Lita Lestrange. Yeah. If... Because it's interesting that he still has her photograph. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. That's what I'm. Again, I'm really nervous because I think they're going to explore more of that. Because she's apparently in the second movie, mm-hmm. the new movie that's coming out. But like, how are they going to explore that and Grindelwald and Dumbledore there's and Jacob? Oh, it's, they need I'm, four more movies. <laughs> but I'm hoping they don't. I'm hoping they don't. Like, there's a lot in there, and and go way to go, J.K. But like, I'm hoping it doesn't get too convoluted. I'm hoping they didn't bite off more than they can chew. So mm-hmm. but anyway, essentially, essentially, um, my the biggest change I would make is actually make it so that Grindelwald the plan is for Credence to explode at the end. Yeah. So it's not some accident where he was actually planning for that to happen. Yeah. And then they, Tina and Newt, get mixed up in it and then have to go back and fix yeah. it. And the other thing I thought that was interesting was that the reason. Newt is able to actually defeat Grindelwald is he uses an unconventional method of battle. He well, that's uses... why I wanted to have Frank because mm-hmm. I thought the setup for Frank was so amazing and Thunderbirds are supposed to be this amazing magical creature. So he creature. could have still done that. And I think what's interesting always if you look at these classical villains, um, especially like with Voldemort, one, the pattern is that they, they fall because of some oversight and it usually has to do with pride. Mm. And so I think... And and for them, it's almost like the the most embarrassing thing would be to be defeated by something that they saw. That's as, beneath them. That's beneath them. And that's very Voldemort. And, and that's very Voldemort. And that would be very Grindelwald too. Yeah. And so being, he would only know magic, but using these beasts yeah. to fight Grindelwald would actually be that would also be why Newt is able to defeat, to defeat Grindelwald. Him. But I wanted to use Frank because I just think Frank, well, Frank could work for that. I th- but I just think he's more cinematic. Like, like oh, for sure. So for somebody who's an amazing auror. Imagine them trying to fight a storm. So, you know what I mean? Like, literally a force of nature. So, think in the Harry Potter universe, um, dragons aren't affected by magic unless you hit them in the eye. Okay. So, I'm just wondering, like, like Thunderbirds are considered, like, one of America's, one of North America's greatest magical creatures on, the, mm-hmm. on par with dragons. So, like, what... What do Thunderbirds have? You know what I mean? Like, there's phoenixes and there's uh, dragons that we've already seen. So what does a Thunderbird have? And maybe explore a little bit more of that. Like, clearly they can cause rain, storms. They can cause lightning. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see Grindelwald fight 
a Ooh. Thunderbird. That That's was cool. what I was going for. Oh, okay. Whereas, like, the Aurors are just getting in the way of Frank and... That's what I was going for. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then the other idea that I had, too, I had one more other small idea in terms of connecting Newt and Grindelwald a little bit more with this idea of for the greater good. Mm-hmm. Um, Grindelwald's position is he, is he is willing to use other people for the greater good. Newt's commander might not. And here's my here's a thought that I had about Newt's commander and the it was a Sudanese girl who died yeah the Sudanese girl who he had studied my thought was build a little bit more into that where he goes to study this Sudanese girl sees that she's dying sees that she has an obscurious and knows that she's going to die knows that she's going to wreak havoc before she dies and knows the only way to stop her is to actually kill her but he can't do it yeah he's like I can't do it but I know this is going to go bad so in in, fa- in Fantastic Beasts, one of my ideas was that you would have a scene where he is, it'd be like he's in prison. Kind of like how he explains it in the current movie, but he explains, I saw this happening. I knew how to stop it. The only way I could have stopped it was to kill her, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And she ended up, she ended up dying a very painful death and destroying an entire village. Yeah. And that would be. The, that would be how you connect him, him with and Grindelwald. Like, so for the greater good, whereas Grindelwald could Gr- kill him. For Grindelwald, the Grindelwald is willing to cannot, do You yeah. cannot do that. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. So my only thing about your pitch, and I, I really like everything you've done thematically, but my only problem with your pitch is Tina knowing about an Obscurial and an Obscurious is unlikely. Right? Okay. Because um, she, uh, as, the, um, as the president of Makusa says... Um, there hasn't been an obscurial or an obscurious in in the states for a long time. There's no mm-hmm. way it could be. Right. And it goes. Newt goes. He looks and he's like, "No, that's what it is. Don't pretend. Nothing else could make those scars." But Newt has studied them. Right. So the likelihood of Tina knowing about an obscurial or an obscurious is unlikely. Well, for me, for, well, it wasn't so much that she knows, but she hypothesizes. And she sees similar patterns to previous the previous time that it's happened and she's the only one who's gone to the effort oh, of going yeah. okay. maybe this has happened before. I think done I the think research. The only way that yeah, the only way that would happen is is if like we keep seeing like people saying like in the movie they describe like it was like a glowing wi- or a dark wind with eyes yeah. and then and then like um, the effects it has and then the scarring and she's like this is unlike any other kind of magical beast I've ever seen and so I think it would be more interesting to actually see her like to pull a Hermione go to the library and, and do thinking. research I was thinking where she should like, have been more like Hermione well I don't want yeah. her to be too much like Hermione but but, but like a driven a driven woman person. yeah where she goes out and like she's like hang on I have a hypothesis yeah. and everyone's like an obscurious what exactly. bitch don't know what she talking <laughs> about you know what I mean because yeah. it's she's pushing for this like this crazy hypothesis where everyone's like, no, Obscurials and Obscurious don't exist anymore because that doesn't happen in – they're they're so big-minded. Like the 1920s is all about, you know, progress and moving forward, right, mm-hmm. for the muggles, the nomadges. But for the wizards, it's all about hunker down, yeah, don't be found, right, yeah. preservation. So what we get is, is the, these sort of two things playing against each other where she's like, hey, I have this hypothesis about an Obscurial and everyone is like, no, 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 there can't be because that would ruin everything. Yeah. And so that would make sense. But we'd have to see her do the research. Exactly. It couldn't just be like, oh, well, I know what it is. Because that makes well, sense for Newt, but not for Tina. Exactly. And that's why I'm saying she would have done the research. Yeah. And maybe we'd show it if it was a TV pilot. For- yeah. <laughs> Back <laughs> to TV shows because we would, have, shows, we would have the time for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, like, now that we've both done that, I, I wanted to ask about your closing thoughts on on the pitches. So, like I said, everything about your pitch I love. I love this darker tone. And part of me wishes that I had done the pitch that was more about exploring this this abusive second Salem family relationship um because I think there's a darker movie in there that could be like like um I don't even know like not a horror movie but almost like an emotional thriller that takes place in the Harry Potter universe mm-hmm. which is so not Rowling's shtick do you know what I mean like mm. she would never write a dark Harry Potter story dark themes but never a dark story yeah it's hard to say because that that's one of the questions that i have is how much of it is she has to because there's a franchise now attached to it and how much of it is you can't go and you there's only a, a certain length you can actually go to because it's kind of it's a family movie. it has to be family friendly exactly right? and because so, the only franchise that i can think of that is that was like 
and it's not even a franchise, but was like like dark and brooding was mm-hmm. was Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy, right? But it wasn't a franchise; it was always going to be a trilogy, right? And so, I feel like. I feel like I hope one day we get a dark Harry Potter story, but I feel like it won't happen. No, I know. I know this is, and that's the way I feel with this too. Because I thought the whole um, the new Salem witch movement super interesting was very interesting. It was, and and I felt like I I would. I think it would be amazing. Should be explored more. I think it would be amazing if we got if we got a Harry Potter. Um, story that took place in Massachusetts in Salem, oh. Massachusetts, at the time of the witch hunts, to be like, this is what you you've heard the story, you've read the Crucible, you've heard the story of what was going on for the the Nomadges, but what was actually going on with the wizards during the the Salem right. witch trials, yeah. right? Because like like uh, Salem is not that far from Massachusetts, which is a big city, right? Mm-hmm. And and like it's near Antioch, and like so this is not some like people are like, oh, Salem is sort of backwater, yes, but it's not far from Massachusetts, so like. I think there could be a huge wizarding community out there with a great plot. Yeah. Like, and just dark, dark, dark wizarding story. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe uh, Netflix is the realm for the like dark Harry well, Potter. Well, you said you, we might well, do a pitch. You, so know, you say I you have a pitch. I don't, have, don't spoil anything. Cause I, I think I just came up with my for, pitch for a dark, for a dark Harry Potter movie. And I think I, I just came okay. up with mine. So, so, cause I'd like to see that spoilers. too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let, let's leave that for another day. So what I also wanted to talk about was, um, did you catch? I wonder if you caught this. What an obscurial and an obscurious means for the franchise going forward, and more specifically, what it means for um, Dumbledore and Grindelwald's characters. Do you understand what I'm asking? Um, yes, I think. Okay, so Dumbledore and Grindelwald knew each other. Yes, and in the past oh, they knew about Ariana. I was going to say, is Ariana? Uh, I think yeah. the implication, and I love that it, sa- it never says this in the movie, but I think the implication is the reason Grindelwald is looking for credence or an obscurial mm-hmm. in in, a, in general is because he's seen the power once before With in Ariana. Ariana, but it's never specifically said. So I think that's one of the reasons why I love this movie. I'm like, oh my god. It's it all makes sense if you realize that Ariana is an obscurity, right? Which is also go back going back to my point where I, I think you would appreciate it more if you know all of that. But mm. as a standalone movie, movie, you're not going to pick up on those yeah. things, which unless is you why have I thought, an which, is, exactly, Potter, yeah. which is why I thought it, to make it more interesting as a movie, you just have to work out some of those motivations. And yeah. just another note, as a just a general filmmaking thing, I I think one of the things that holds this movie back is that that whole storyline is about twists, like ooh, what a twist, ooh, what a yeah, twist. Yeah, you get like one, but. Yeah, exactly. And it's much more interesting. I personally believe, as a general rule, it's much more interesting if you know right up front what's actually going on, and then it's about the characters dealing with that. So a classic example. I don't mind a twist, but the t- you can twist, only, but... it has to be a twist that you only get once, and it has to be a twist that, that if you go yeah, it has to be earned. And if you go back and watch the movie, it makes the context of the movie change. Mm-hmm. So in, in this movie, the twist of, of Graves being Grindelwald, I think does have some rewatchability, mm-hmm. but more in the cinematography than it does in the actual plot. Yeah, exactly. And the other twist with Credence being the obscurial isn't as interesting, I think. It, it, but again... I mean, it works. The thing it is, works it a, does work. And they, 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 set, they always set but it up it only some exists, shots. It only exists as a twist, is my point. Yeah. It doesn't actually yeah. have any other emotional yeah. resonance but to I, it, except for, think, oh, I didn't see that coming. I do think it's shot really well, where, where um, Credence, is. Is, Credence is always in the background, but we keep focusing on... Um, on the girl. On the girl. What's her name? Uh, um... Charity? No, 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 no. Modesty. Modesty. We keep focusing on modesty, but Credence is always in the background. And so I think this that's really well done. But from a narrative perspective, it's not really a twist. It's all cinematography. Yeah. Well, but the whole idea is to mislead you. But yeah, that's but all it does. It's all, it's all misleading through pronouns because they keep because uh yeah. the example newt gives is the sudanese girl and she 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 so mm-hmm. then when we see the whole family we see a young girl under 10 right. which is which fits the description plus we assume it's the young girl because we kept we just heard the she yeah. pronoun yeah. so the twist works for credence but it it, it it's not but, earned but well, well it's it's it, it works. Is my just thing a twist. is, my thing is, it's just a twist. Yeah. There's no, there's, no, it's like, oh, okay, so it's actually him. And I just think it's more interesting if if we focus Brindlebold on one knows, and he's using, and then the twist is about who is this guy Graves? What is he up to? Right. And then it just makes him a much more sinister character yeah. going forward. Yeah. Sets up Grindelwald better. Yeah. And I also 
personally, I would not have cast Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. Neither would I. Neither would I. And not that I have anything wrong with Johnny Depp. I mean, he's okay. I actually I love don't... the Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. movies, but I, just, I would not have cast him as... I just don't think I just, it was a good choice. No. I honestly would have kept... Uh, Colin, Fer- yeah, or, uh, Colin, Colin Farrell. Farrell. Yeah, I think he is an absolutely. He's amazing, phenomenal, and he's amazing in that movie. And to throw him away after just one movie, yeah, kind of heartbreaking. Well, what, like Colin Farrell's also like a likable guy too, which is even better for villains, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, people... uh, David Tennant as uh, you haven't seen Jessica Jones, but David Tennant as, oh, right. as well, the he's Purple a, Man. He's as... also a villain in Harry Potter as well. Yeah, sort but of. He's so super small. Yeah, but David Tennant as as the villain in Jessica Jones. You're like, why do I like you, but also you're a horrible person? And right. not, not just like him because of uh, the fact that he's a great actor. I like him because he plays this charismatic British gentleman who's also a horrible human being. <laughs> right. Right? Um, anyway, I think that puts us at the end for today. Oh, right. Um, how, how long was that? That's uh, We're getting close to the hour mark. Oh, wow. So uh, I just want to say, like, uh, where can people find you on social media? That's at Twitter, at okay. Nate Draper cool yeah and you can probably find me on facebook if anyone still uses facebook or you can find us on facebook at cinemasters ultimate timeline and then if you're listening to us on itunes or soundcloud or youtube or wherever give us a like or a five stars or a thumbs up and a great comment and a great comment because that that, share it with your friends that helps us out to 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 reach more subscribe subscribe yeah yeah. that's something you gotta do too uh, if you would like to leave a comment for something you'd like to hear us pitch Please do tweet it to us, tweet or it to Facebook us, or it Facebook. to us, yeah, just, or snail or mail it to us. It to even us. though we're not going to give you our mailing addresses because no. that's creepy, that's weird. Um, but yeah, but if us... you could do, deliver by carrier pigeon, that would be badass. <laughs> but leave us leave us a post about if you have something you'd like to see us watch and then and then repitch. Like if it's a bad movie, well, but, we, yeah, but well, don't do the room. <laughs> no, don't do the room. That that's we're not redoing that. No, movie. that movie's great. Yeah. as it is, uh, I would not like. Yeah, pitch a movie that is. Uh, awkward or like has good ideas but doesn't yeah it yeah. just doesn't quite land. doesn't quite land yeah because that's what we're interested in doing. exactly and then just to end off what are you watching right now movie or tv show that you'd recommend to people mind hunter mind hunter okay and i'm gonna recommend star versus the forces of evil if okay. you haven't watched it it's amazing and we'll catch you next time on cinemasters ultimate timeline all right yeah are you gonna do your uh your cover of kanye west's famous scoop a poop oh like scoop a poop scoop a poop see you guys later okay bye <laughs>